Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and some of the new advances when it comes to the idea of hibernation. And specifically hibernation in space, sending astronauts to, for example, Mars by having them sleep through the entire trip. Something that a lot of scientists are really interested in, mostly because it would actually allow for far distance travel across the solar system relatively easy and relatively cheap. And so let's discuss these ideas in a little bit more detail, focusing on some of the recent discoveries. But I guess to start, so what exactly is hibernation? Well, scientifically speaking, this concept is usually referred to as torpor. In a nutshell, it refers to the way that some animals conserve energy by suppressing their metabolism, usually when there's not enough food available. Which in most cases, at least in mammals, also includes the decrease in temperature and obviously the decrease in overall bodily activity. With most animals today, using torpor or hibernation is a kind of a survival strategy for your typical seasonal changes like for example during winter. So for example, bats will usually reduce their heartbeat, they'll also reduce their breathing, they'll normally start to reduce temperature of their body, making it a lot closer to the ambient temperature, and will generally stay this way until things warm up around them and until the season changes. And they can stay in this state for several months, just like many other mammals including bears. Although animals like snakes and a lot of other reptiles are much much better at it, they can actually stay in this state for an extremely long time, with tardigrades being the most successful animals when it comes to this particular phenomenon. And so naturally, a lot of scientists have been trying to discover how to do this in humans for one reason or another. For example, a few decades ago, several doctors proposed the idea of so-called medical torpor, essentially putting a human into a state of hibernation in order to reduce metabolism during, for example, a complex surgery, and this induced hypothermia seems to work pretty well. But this is still a relatively rare practice, and it hasn't really had a lot of advances in the last few years. And on top of this, this particular idea of medical hibernation is more or less temporary. Essentially, you're not able to sustain these conditions for a human being for a long period of time. But nevertheless, one of the best role models for human hibernation is essentially a bear, with a similar body mass, relatively similar body temperature, and a lot of other similarities, including diet. So generally, when bears start their hibernation process, they obviously first have to acquire a lot of extra fat in order to then reuse this fat during their slumber. But just acquiring extra body fat would obviously not be enough. So for example, when it comes to bears, even though they can stay up to about six months in their immobile hibernating state, essentially fasting, by the time they exit their den, they normally can regain all of their body mass and essentially all of their muscles within just approximately 20 days. But a lot of human studies on, for example, immobile patients have discovered quite the opposite. A human staying in bed for so long and not moving would most likely experience a huge muscle loss, bone strength loss, and a very high risk of a heart failure. So the process of hibernation physically protects these animals like bears and bats from having the damage and from having all of these problems that humans experience. And some of the early discoveries suggest that hormones do play a relatively big role in this. For example, lower testosterone levels in a typical mammal seem to actually prevent a lot of the damage. And since hormones like estrogen are already known to regulate metabolism, in the past it's been suggested that it would actually be much easier for a female astronaut to survive any long-term trip. Especially when it comes to the idea of suspended animation or hibernation. But then I guess the other question here is, why would you want to have hibernation on a spacecraft anyway? Wouldn't it be kind of complicated and somewhat dangerous? Well here it's really all down to the costs and the ability to bring everything with you. For example, a mission to Mars would require a lot of stuff, a lot of different things for the humans to survive. For example, for the astronauts to stay in a capsule for six months and to not go crazy, but also to maintain their physical health, each of the astronauts would require a lot of different equipment and at the same time would also require at least 30 kilograms of a lot of materials per week. And here we're not just talking about exercise equipment, we're also talking about things like food, things like water, and a lot of other things in order to stay fit not just physically, but also mentally. So quite a lot of requirements for such a long trip. But some of the recent studies from ESA 
determined that you could technically reduce the weight of a spacecraft by at least a third and still keep all of the astronauts healthy and sound inside by essentially introducing hibernation capsules where all of the astronauts sort of stay for several months, with each of the capsules essentially representing a kind of a soft bed surrounded by either water or some kind of other relatively thick shield protecting the astronauts from radiation, with each of the astronauts essentially being in that induced torpor state, with the metabolism reduced down to about 25% of normal. And so by having astronauts hibernate on their trip to Mars, the scientists believe that it's actually possible to not just save money and save a lot of fuel and at the same time save a lot of space on the spacecraft, it also provides an ability for the scientists to control physiological and psychological states of the astronauts. But at the moment all of this is very preliminary. The Sutter study, however, did discover something extremely interesting. The study that, as always, you can find in the description below focused on studying how the hibernation inside different types of wintering squirrels, and specifically focusing on this animal right here known as the 13-lined ground squirrel. And the main purpose of the study was to actually try to confirm a relatively old hypothesis, the idea known as the urea nitrogen salvage, that might actually help us understand how hibernation works in a lot of these other animals that are not humans, and how to maybe then apply this to ourselves in order to make these trips to Mars possible. And what it all comes down to is essentially gut bacteria, or the bacteria living in our intestines, or in this case the intestines of these squirrels. And the question here is of course, how do hibernating animals end up leaving hibernation almost completely unaffected by anything, experiencing almost no muscle loss at all? And the potential answer in the study comes from the idea of the bacteria in the gut of these squirrels that seems to recycle the compound known as urea. Urea is a nitrogen compound usually present in our pee, and although normally it will be expelled as urine, in an animal that's hibernating it obviously doesn't go anywhere. And so some of the bacteria present in the gut of the squirrels have found a way to reuse the urea from urine recycling nitrogen from it and turn it into other proteins, including muscle proteins, that then maintain the rest of the body. In this particular study, they actually marked some of the molecules of urea with a different isotope of carbon and nitrogen that would be visible under certain uh, circumstances, and then tracked all of this as it traveled through the squirrel's body, with a lot of these molecules eventually producing tissue proteins. They also ran this experiment with other squirrels that did not have the same gut microbes, discovering that these particular squirrels did not seem to contain the process of urea nitrogen salvage. In other words, it's the presence of the bacteria in the gut of the squirrels that seem to prevent the damage to tissue and muscles. And even though a lot of other metabolic processes decreased in their amount as the winter progressed, or essentially as the squirrel was hibernating, this process of urea nitrogen salvage was at the highest near the end of the winter, near the end of hibernation. Although in this particular case, the bacteria were producing these proteins mostly for their own use. But because this is an example of symbiotic relationship, the proteins produced by the bacteria eventually got used by the squirrels as well. And so all of the squirrels, as they emerged from hibernation, were actually in almost the top shape. It only took them a few days to recover. Whereas the squirrels without the gut bacteria obviously had a lot of problems later on. But more importantly, a much older study from three decades ago has potentially established that humans seem to be able to do so as well. In other words, the actual ability to reuse urea to produce nitrogen and different proteins seems to be there. It's just not optimized and doesn't really work well. Which means that there is probably a way to make this optimized and to create an ability for humans to do pretty much the same these squirrels do, just on a larger scale. But for now that's kind of all we've discovered and that's all we know. Hopefully in the next few years ESA comes up with some kind of an experimental way to test all of this, and maybe in the next few years we'll even see our first test of human hibernation in action. For now though, well, that's pretty much it. It's just a study and just a theory. Until future discoveries or until we learn something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.